started running when I was 10, found I was okay at it. And then as I got older and more problems came my way, running was the one thing that was free and that you could just go out on the moors, on the hills and you just get to escape. It didn't matter where I was, you could just put your shoes on, run, come back and then think, right, okay, back to being mum again, back to work. When Tony and I got together, we then opened Let's Run. To run together and train together was something that we both enjoyed. I know Tony used it as an escape and I certainly did too. We both liked to get a really good run out, chatting loads, discussing ideas for the shop, discussing future plans, but still running together. So we could either enjoy each other's company or we could chat and rationalise things between us. Ultra running developed a community around here. You could go for anywhere, anytime, and it gives you that half an hour, 20 minutes, or whatever it is, where you can mix with other runners, and they would turn out to be my best friends. I like racing and I like competing, but my relationship with running is I want to go out and enjoy it. And I don't care where I come or what I do, I just want to enjoy myself. One morning I woke up and found I'd been entered in the spine. That was an interesting morning. <laughs> Tony entered me in it and it was always on my to-do list. It wasn't on my to-do list for 2019. I've been running a long time and I've been doing ultras a long time. So I had all of my equipment, I had I had my bags, I had my, my kit, uh, the sponsors had provided me with kit. I had so much support and backup that I think I had a good base to start with. But I didn't go in underprepared or thinking this is going to be a walk in the park. I knew it was going to be awful, and it was. The Spine Race is a 268 mile, seven day race from Edale to Kirk Yetham, encompassing the entire Pennine Way within the seven days. There is mountains, moorland, areas of outstanding natural beauty. The physical challenges, they're obvious. Racing are over 400 kilometers, people journey through all kinds of weather uh, along this route because it's a winter race, so it's very challenging conditions. Equally as challenging is the mental aspects of the race, you know, the mental management, managing your own mood when things don't work out, being able to make judgments constantly, what kit should I be wearing, what kit should I not be wearing, and I think that's what makes it really special. Walking to the start line was quite nerve-wracking. I can remember the butterflies, it was pouring down, it still seemed quite dark, it was miserable, and I just thought I've got a week long now of being outside and cold and wet. But it was all that anticipation as well, I was thinking, I just want to get started on it now, I just want to be out on that course, and then that's it, you just keep moving, then it's one foot in front of the other, get to the finish. During Shelley's race, she experienced very challenging conditions in the southern part of the course. She was battered by very heavy winds, you know, 50 to 70 mile an hour gusts, driving rain, difficult visibility during the day and the night. So there was a lot, for the first two and a half days, it's a very difficult start that she had. Um, today's been a lot wetter than my recce was. Um, wind's definitely been the, the main factor for me today. And um, I'm trying to stay up right. The next bit from here, we've got a nice climb back out from what we've just come back down. After that, I think it's going to just be concentration on the navigation, especially when you're tired. It's a bit more difficult. <laughs> I don't think anyone can explain to you what you go through and what you put your body through. I signed lots of disclaimers on the route. It was just no end of just shock and pain as well. The pain in my feet, I don't think I comprehended could be so bad. I knew that I was still fit enough to continue and I know medically they were meeting all of their requirements, but I also knew that I wasn't that low that I couldn't continue. Breathing. I had some awful moments, hike up Nick, I had a horrendous time. 
The GPS is taking me way over the edge. And I realised about one stride before I dropped off. I was completely lost and I thought I was about to die. So that was quite stressful. That was such a down moment. The wind was awful. I was pretty much blind. I was just sat on the floor and cried and then pulled myself together and did get back down into Dufton. But it just took uh, an awful lot, I suppose, of strength to get back up and to go and, and not press my SOS button. I've pulled out of races before, um, I got pulled out of UTMB medically. I wanted to finish for myself, but I wanted to finish mainly for everybody that had supported me, everyone that had come in the shop, everyone that had sent messages of support and cards of support prior to it. And I didn't want to go back and tell my kids that, oh, actually, I've come back a bit early, I failed. I met Tony a few years ago now. Um, I was a runner, did Hardmore series. Tony had or opened the Ultraman store. That's how I met him when he sponsored one of the races. Um, he presented my prize to me at the end of the 110 Hardmore's 110. And then we got together at a friend's wedding and then he moved down here with me and then we opened Let's Run together. Tony took his own life in July 2018. Being ex-police, I'd been to a number of suicides. Um, doesn't make it any easier, but I knew the protocol and I think I just went into professional mode, ringing ambulance, ringing police. Um, I cut him down. Um, and then it's, it's dealing with everybody else's emotions as well as your own. It's a complete sense of disbelief and then having to put something out publicly as well. You just don't know where you start and what you do and what you say. I was telling people what's happened and I think people had a right to know because if that stigma stays, then it's not gonna prevent any more. There's gonna be more men taking their own lives. Tony didn't talk to me about any depression. He could be sometimes a bit of an up and down character, but nothing that I thought was out of the ordinary. It's generally cross as an order had gone wrong or a delivery hadn't arrived. It was just normal, everyday life that everybody experiences in their families. There was nothing that I could put my finger on and say, this happened, I should have known he was about to do this. I never expected to be then cutting him down and dealing with a funeral and talking to so many people about suicide. A lot of people are very often at a vulnerable point in their lives when they decide to do some exercise and a lot of ultra runners feel that need to work through those difficulties and then know that you have the strength of character to be able to push on and keep going. I think the sense of community is incredibly important because it's all about everybody being supportive to each other. Being able to talk about your emotional well-being so that we actually do feel better for longer, not just live longer. When Tony died and everything sort of settled back down and everybody else moved on with their lives and I thought I want to do something that's going to raise some money and try and help other people. I chose Calm as my charity for the spine. Calm's a lesser known charity, I'd never heard of it. 
um, until I looked at um, the provider helpline, um, the try and raise awareness, they've got some run groups going. So I just thought it was all very relevant to me and to what I'd experienced, so that's why I, I chose them. I thought, well, if I finish my application, it's quite a long race, it, it's got quite a bit of credibility about it. I thought people will hopefully start watching the dots and they'll see the video footage of it coming in every day and hopefully think it's worthwhile put, putting some money in, whatever it is and whatever amount they can afford. The weather changed again and it's become bitterly cold. So the challenges that Shelley's got, she's transitioned from an incredibly wet event, which was quite wild and raw, to then a cold event where the cumulative fatigue, the, the difficulties that you might experience retaining um, body weight or even your appetite. Um, she would have been thirsty, she would have been tired. And as I say, the longer that you progress through the event, the more these things stack and they slowly sort of erode your physicality, slowly erode your mood and being able to sort of continue through that is, is a real challenge. I'm just checking blood pressure and that's okay. Thank goodness. Start with antibiotics of a chest infection. Um, and then try and get my feet sorted. So I plan for the race is just to try and get to the finish. I thought about a lot of things on the spine. Some of it was just mundane, boring things. What have I got to do next week? Did I, did I definitely put food in the fridge? You're out there and you're beating yourself up against the elements and whether you think I want to go out and just get all the demons out or just run and have a day that you can just escape from everything and rationalise things in your mind as well. There's so many things that go through, thinking things about Tony, conversations with Tony when I'm having a rough moment saying to Tony, right, do you want to lay off me now? I've really had an awful time. You're responsible for this wind. Do you want to just calm it down a bit now? I can't cope with any more of it. And then moving on to thinking about how my life's going to go forward, what I'm going to do with it. The last four and a half, five miles, if I took much longer, it would be dark before I finished, which scared me into running in because I thought there's no way I'm putting my head torch back on again. I cried for about a mile and a half, cried all the way down and then realised that, that I pulled myself together again. Can't look this bad crossing over the finish line. <laughs> I've already been windswept for a week. And then coming down that hill, God, it took forever. Back to here, everybody, before I could see them and there was no way that I wasn't finishing. When I crossed over the finish line, just that relief that I'm going to be able to take my shoes off in a minute and I don't have to put my head torch on and that's it, I'm going to sleep in the bed tonight and I'm going to eat proper food and I can have a shower and wash my hair and just nice things. Things I've ever had to do, Shelley. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, Sorry for crying. Well done. Well done, Shelley. Amazing. You've got to say that you know Shelley is one tough woman for being able to complete this. That that really took some doing, and it's really impressive.
ultra running kind of takes you to places that you wouldn't normally go to and it can give you that inner strength to really, really just be able to push on and people recognise that in each other and I think that's what's really special about that community. People are incredibly proud of her, of what she has achieved and I still I feel very lucky to have Shelley in my life. Can't really say any more than that. I still haven't found words to describe the spine. It's five weeks after and I still haven't thought of a word to be able to describe what happened. I have no regrets whatsoever. I think it's raised a huge amount of money, it's raised a huge amount of awareness and it's got people talking. And if I could have saved one person or got one person to talk and say, I'm not coping well, then that's what I wanted to do. And I know I've done that, so um, no regrets whatsoever.